This lecture will cover Chapter 2, Urine and Body Fluid Analysis Automation. So this lecture will be very brief. We're just going to kind of touch on some of the automation in your analysis, and we're not really going to go a lot in depth with this lecture. So your analysis automation does use reflectance phototometry. And so with the automated reagent strip readers, it does use a spectro spectroformatic measurement of reflectance phototometry. And this compares the amount of light that is actually reflected with known concentrations, and it displays that on a printout that will display those concentrations in units. And then that, in turn, can be transferred over to the laboratory information system, or the LIS. Automated instruments in your analysis include instruments that are semi-automated and fully automated, or analyzers that are automated that do just the urine um, microscopy of the urine sample, or it can be complete automation in which it does the um, chemical analysis as well as the physical analysis. Advantages of automation includes the fact that they are user friendly. There's usually some sort of audio or video prompts that kind of tells you what to do. There's some sort of um, online computer capabilities, the ability to barcode read your samples. Um, some of them you can manually enter the color and clarity. Um, and microscopic results that are included on the printout. Um, so when you're scanning your sample, you'd manually enter color and clarity, um, and then those results would actually print on your printout. It will also flag any sort of abnormal results, and some of these analyzers can actually store these patient results within its matrix, within its computer software, um, as well as your control results, which are stored, can be stored in this system as well. There's usually very minimum calibration, cleaning, and maintenance procedures that are performed, and all of these procedures are specific to the particular instrument that is being used. Now we'll just briefly discuss some of the differences between semi-automated and fully automated analyzers. So with your semi-automated analyzers, these are going to be usually your um, smaller to medium vol volume labs. So this would be like your physician's offices, your urgent care centers, your larger physician practices. Um, maybe some type of urgent, standalone, emergency room type setting. Um, and so with these analyzers, they're pretty easy to run because they have a self-calibration uh, that's built into the analyzer. It, it will flag abnormal results, and I provided this, this is if it is set up um, to flag those results when you initially get that analyzer. The results can be stored within the analyzer itself. They can be printed or you can actually just send it directly to the LIS and not have to worry about having a printout. It does periodic automatic checks throughout the day, and it also is, has the ability to pretty much do, um, it does the entire uh, dipstick reading that you are familiar with, as well as some of these analyzers will also do a protein to creatinine ratio, so it'll do those um, microalbumins as well. Your fully automated analyzers are more for your higher volume labs, so it's going to be like your hospital labs or um, maybe some of your larger urinalysis, dialysis clinics. They might have something a little bit more robust. Um, reference laboratories, your, your labs that are going to do a larger volume of urine will have a fully automated uh, chemistry system. And so what this does is it allows you to set up those ranges and then it can do additional things like uh, alert you if any sort of confirmatory testing needs to be done or microscopics if you maybe need to look at something manually versus looking at the automation. Um, results and calibrations, QC, all those things can be stored within the system as well as provide a printout or um, be able to be automatically transmitted to the LIS. Analytes that are measured, again, it's going to be what is on that urine dipstick. So one of the newer things that a lot of laboratories are getting now is the automated analyzers that actually do automated microscopy. And so over the years, um, the technology has kind of been developed. It kind of uses the same technology uh, that is used within um, your CBC analyzers to do that cellular morphology and an analysis of those cells um, within those CBC analyzers. So manual microscopy is 
it's not very cost effective. It does require tech time. It requires a specialized training. Um, and so, you know, extra supplies, whereas with your analyzers, everything's contained within the analyzer. So you're not having those excess uh, urine tubes and things like that that you're having to use as waste material. Um, with your automated urine cell microscopy analyzers, they can usually provide results pretty rapidly, usually within a, a minute or less. Um, whereas when you're doing a sample manually, you have to spin it down, you have to take the time to actually stop whatever else you might be doing and go back to actually sit down in a microscope and, and uh, report that out. So that's going to have at minimum a five minute span plus your time to load your chamber. Uh, load your device, your mic your microscope or your slide or whatever you use in your your COVA system. And so the time that you're taking to actually do that um, is more time that's used up. So this kind of helps with that improvement of that turnaround time. And again, it uses the flow cytometry and digital imaging to act actually capture images of those cells and compare them and put them into the proper categories. Um, occasionally, you still might need to look at something if it's not really sure where to put it at but it does um, it looks at many cells a lot quicker than what you would have the ability to look at in just a spun sample with these automated microscopy analyzers there's several out there on the market I'm not going to break them down in too much detail but I just want to kind of get you a little bit familiar with them so Sysmax does have a couple of analyzers out there um, both of them do use that flow cytometry paired with the digital imaging to actually um, look at those el elements that are within that uh, within that urine sample and so it can kind of um, depending on which methodology it uses it can kind of break them down into uh, categories for red blood cell white blood cell it looks at the nuclear material and material inside of the cell as well as the surface of the cell um, looks at the size, various things like that, much, very much similar to what your CBC um, automated differential analyzers can do. The Beckman Coulter's IQ200 analyzer uses digital flow morphology and particle recognition. Um, this analyzer can actually be used to count body fluids as well. And so once it takes that sample into the machine, um, then it's able to kind of differentiate the cells into various categories. So not only can it kind of break it down to that it's an epithelial cell versus a white blood cell, it can actually um, categorize those epithelial cells. Um, and then it, it just can kind of subdivide each of those different um, different elements or particulates that are found in that urine it can kind of sub subdivide them up in, in, into different categories so it can kind of break it down into the different crystals and um, even recognize things like the the yeast with the pseudo hyphae or trichomonas which a lot of your your analyzers can't really do it may flag it know that it's something different but it can't really tell you what it is so you still might have to look, um, look at those images and place them into a category or um, still go to a manual, manual microscopy. The Eurosat analyzers, they also perform automated microscopy using digital imaging. Um, with this particular analyzer, you do have the ability to zoom in um, on those images, so that kind of helps with that um, differentiation of those different elements. Um, the features, depending on whether you use the 2 or the 3 Pro, um, it, it, it may have some different features that it's able to be a little bit more advanced, just depends on which one your facility has. The FUS 100-200 uh, analyzers both identify the cells using a flat flow cell digital imaging technology and then a trained neural network. Um, so this is kind of a little bit newer category of, of imaging. And then it identifies and classifies it into 12 visible components. Um, and then it can, it's based off the shape, the contrast, the texture, the frequency of whatever that particular um, particulate is in that urine sample. So now we're kind of getting into the um, automated chemistry analyzers. Uh, it provide, it, it kind of combines the automation of urine chemistry analyzers with the automation of uh, the urine cell analyzers. 
And so this kind of combines everything down into one. And so this will definitely increase your turnaround time because you're not having to take the time to dip it and spin it and um, look at it under the microscope. It just, it runs everything all at once. Um, with, with any of these analyzers, you have the capability of dipping it and running it through automation and then doing the microscopic manually or vice versa. So this system just kind of uh, does everything at once. The physical and chemical examination, the microscopy, everything's in one. Um, and then of course, like everything else, that report can be printed or can be sent directly through the uh, LIS. And of course, it's gonna flag anything abnormal. Clinitech actually makes a lot of different urine, urine systems, um, automated, semi-automated, fully automated systems. So here we're just kind of going to talk about two of them. They both do require 5 mLs of urine. Um, they can do automatic reflex testing. Um, they can do automatic result verification. So in other words, the results just automatically flow to the system and if everything's normal, it auto verifies. Um, and um, the main thing with that pro is that there's no centrifugation that's required. You don't have to pre-centrifuge uh, your samples or anything like that. The iris cell minimum volume of urine is 4 mLs. Um, it combines the chemistry, the microscopy, and of course that's all that all can again be printed or transmitted via LIS. Um, and this kind of breaks it up into two parts. Once the physical and chemical analysis has been completed, then that sample would actually move over and then the microscopy testing would be done. Um, so it actually combines the process of two analyzers into one. With the LAU mat, um, the minimal value for that is three ml. So you can see these automated analyzers with being able to take smaller volumes are really good for pediatric samples, especially babies. when usually can't get but a few mLs, um, so it kind of it helps with that as well. Uh, this particular analyzer does the, the physical and chemical testing. The Cobalt analyzer only requires a very small volume, less than 3 mLs. Um, and then this analyzer too, fully automated, includes microscopy. Um, it's got several components that it can do for the physical and chemical components of it, as well as, you know, looking at those various cells in microscopy. The UX2000 requires 5 mLs of urine, and of course it does the chemical component as well as the flow cytometry. So it will do that chemical analysis. It also checks for your color and turbidity, and then it looks at those various cells and um, puts those in the appropriate category. And there are some body fluid, fluid analyzers that are automated now. So um, over the years, some of them have kind of been incorporated into the actual CBC analyzer. So the CBC analyzer had a special mode that you could click on it and it would actually, you could tell it that you're gonna run a body fluid to it. But now there are also um, analyzers that are specific for body fluid that aren't combined as part of the CBC analyzer, but most places still use the body fluid mode on the CBC analyzers. For our manual testing, we would use a hemocytometer. Uh, for the automated testing though, um, what that's going to do is actually kind of help bring that process into a quicker process. It's going to do your quality control, it's going to do your precision checks, it just kind of keeps everything more to a standardization rather than um, what one person's technique is may vary from person to person or tech to tech. And so those body fluids, if they're, if your counts are still really, really low or you see malignant cells, then you will probably still have to do a manual differential. So you'll still have to do those cytospin slides. Um, you know, of course, anything that's going to be um, malignant, you do want to confirm it. So um, that extra step to make those slides is, is really not that big of a hardship. So manufacturers recommend, the manufacturer's recommended procedures for special treatment required for the specific body fluid analysis, tenant use, reportable ranges, that's all got to be followed. So whatever that manufacturer says, um, how you should handle that specimen, if you, you should click a special mode on the machine or whatever, do a special cleaning after you need to make sure that you follow those recommendations by that manufacturer in order to get proper function out of that machine. The Advita is capable of 
counting, doing cell counts on pleural fluids, peritoneal fluids, and peritoneal dialysis type fluids. It uses flow cytometry, light scattering, and absorbance for your white blood cell, red blood cell counts. And it also does that differential count to categorize those white blood cells. The SysMax analyzer, this is actually your hematology analyzer, but it does have a mode in it that is for body fluids specifically, and it's been approved for synovial fluid, pleural fluid, and peritoneal fluid. And it uses impedance counts, uh, impedance counting, impedance counting for principles for your red blood cell, uh, red blood cell counts, flow cytometry for your white blood cell counts, and then that's further divided into a two-part differential. Um, the good thing about this machine, though, it can recognize some of those um, abnormal cells as mesothelial cells, um, malignant cells, things like that. So that's a really good feature of that analyzer. The so flow site automated cell count for your CSF. So this one is just for cerebral spinal fluid. Um, it's going to use digital imaging to count those cells, and then it's going to enumerate those cells. Um, and displays the stained cells on the screen. So it actually has a staining process. So it'll put those stained cells up for you. Beckman culture can be used for body fluid analysis um, once you put it in the body fluid mode. And it has been approved for CSF, synovial, pleural, peritoneal, peritoneal dialysate, peritoneal lavage, pericardial, um, serious fluid. So it does have a lot more capabilities. So that's. Um, that's, that's some pretty good capabilities there to be able to cover that many fluids. So um, the instrument does provide your total count as well as it kind of provides your nucleated cells. So your white blood cells that or any of your epithelial cells, anything like that, that have a nucleus to them. Um, and it includes counts for red blood cells. And then, of course, just like anything else, the operator has the opportunity to, re to review those cells, review those counts or it can be set up to automatically auto-verify to the LIS.